Hey friends, it's Trish. We appreciate you stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will hit that subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. Today's video has 25 of our favorite spring into summer DIYs, including two new projects that we hope will give you some inspiration. Now sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these self-adhesive wall tiles from the Dollar Tree, some wire. I don't know what gauge this is. I just know that it's really flexible. I got this from the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly white chalk paint, a piece of floral foam. I'm repurposing this from another project and some florals of choice. Now I'm repurposing these from other projects as well, but you can use whatever you like and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I'm going to do is make my little pocket and I thought this tile was too wide. We are going to be folding it in half. So I decided to cut it down. I'm going to cut on either side of those lines, just leaving that center piece with all of the detail in it. I love all this detail and I am going to save these pieces that I'm cutting off because I'm sure I can use them in another project. Now we're just going to flip it over and separate the adhesive part from the tile and cut that off because we want it to be open. We don't want it to stick together. Now we're just going to fold it in half and I do use a bone folder just to get that crisp edge, but you don't have to do that. You can just fold it in half. Then I'm going to take my glue gun and put a line of glue on either side and press it together and this is going to seal. And we have our little pocket. Now that I have my pocket, I am going to give it a good coat of paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in white. I like that the chalk paint sticks to this really well and I only needed two coats. If you use acrylic, it can be really streaky and you might end up needing more coats. I gave two coats to the front and the back and allowed it to dry. And then once it was completely dry, I'm coming back with a fine grit sandpaper and I'm going to go over all of that detail on there and just make it pop out. I wanted to be able to see it. Now you do this to taste. You can go over as heavy or as light as you want. I did do a pretty heavy distressing on it because I love that look. And I also distressed the back of my pocket. That way it looked the same on both sides. Now that I'm happy with my distressing, I'm going to take that piece of floral foam and I'm just slicing off two little pieces. I didn't want it to be too thick. I just wanted to have something to kind of open up my pocket and something for my flowers to stick down into. Now I'm going to cut off a piece of that wire. You just measure it to how long you want your handle to be. And I'm going to wrap it around my paintbrush handle. And this is just going to give it some curls and make it more interesting. I do pull those out until I like how it looks. And then we're going to punch a hole in each side of our pocket that we can put our wire through. And I'm just using one of those punch things that you get from the Dollar Tree for that. Now we'll stick our wire through one side and then I'm going to use a smaller paintbrush, wrap it around, and then I just push it all up together and it gives you a little knot there in the front. I think it looks really cute that way. Then we're going to do the other side the same way. Just push your wire through there, twist it around your paintbrush and push it into a knot. And you have a cute little handle for your pocket. Now for the fun part, we get to decorate. Now this is totally to taste. You see us do this a lot. We love florals on this channel and we have never claimed to be florists. We just kind of stick things in until we like how it looks. And I think that's the beauty of doing florals anyway. I love having them in my home and I just kind of stick it in. If I don't like how it looks, I pull it out and put it in another place. And then once you get those flowers 
doors in place and you're happy with how it looks, this project is complete. Very simple, lightweight, and very pretty. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using one of the kits that I have been selling in my Etsy store. These are the little sign kits. They're 10 inch signs that you can sit on a table or a shelf and it's just a way to change out for the different seasons. Um, if you don't want to purchase one of these kits, don't worry. I will also put an SVG in the Etsy shop that you can purchase if you want to cut this out of vinyl and they don't cost very much. Or you could paint this easily. You could draw a line to section off one of the 10 inch rounds like you get from Hobby Lobby and then you could make polka dots on the bottom you can freehand your lettering and make it really cute and you can paint a little ladybug on it I think that would be absolutely adorable now if you do purchase one of the kits it comes with the 10 inch round that is scored this is scored so that you know where to put your lettering to make sure that it lines up right it has this bottom piece to this is kind of a 3d sign it has this bottom piece that you can put on here we're going to be painting this red like a ladybug um, it also has all of your lettering that lines up over your scoring and makes the hay ladybug you're going to get a 3d ladybug you get the wooden bottom piece and the wing piece that you can put together to make a cute little ladybug to go up there on your sign as well and it comes with this little stand this is a little wooden stand it slides together and your sign is going to fit into your stand and stand up so that anyone that is looking at your table or your shelving wherever you have this place is going to be able to see it and it's really pretty because it's decorative now if you don't purchase one of these kits and you do make some of these little 10 inch signs you can get the little stands at Hobby Lobby that holds signs that you could also put this in because I never want you guys to feel like I'm trying to force you to purchase what I have made and am selling I always want to give you several Several options now to put this together I'm going to be using some super glue wood glue I get this from the Dollar Tree you could use any wood glue I wouldn't suggest hot glue because it has a tendency to um, get thick and it can make your pieces pop up and not really join with your sign and um, you want to make sure that it joins for the black parts of mine, you can either use, you know, black paint. You can use acrylic. I love Waverly chalk paint. Y'all know that. I also love to stain. And I use these furniture repair markers. This is the black ones that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I love to stain my pieces with that. I also use Jock Permanent Markers. I use those on the edges just to clean up any paint that may get over on the edges because I don't like it to look messy. Now, I'm also going to be using using some white paint and some red paint. You can use acrylic. I love Waverly chalk paint. I have white and crimson. So I'm going to be using that. And I may even, I think on my ladybug, I don't know, maybe not. Um, but I may even use some of my Waverly chalk paint and ink. So let's see how easy this is to put together. I am going to speed it up so you're not having to watch me paint in real time, but I'll let you know exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing I decided to do was to put my bottom piece on under my letters and draw a line so I would know which part of my sign I wanted to paint black and which part I wanted to paint white. Now, I did make a mistake when I did this. I did not put my piece on um, straight and I didn't check it to make sure that my letters didn't look crooked. And as a result, I did make it so that it makes my letters look crooked. If I had just adjusted it over just a little bit, it would have lined up perfectly. So make sure you look for that. 
Once I got it divided up, I painted the top part with my white Waverly chalk paint. And it does look like you can't see those lines, but once it dries, you can still see where your letter lines are. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm painting the bottom part of my sign with my Waverly chalk paint in ink. Now you can do this, you can stain it however you want to do this part. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my pieces. I'm going to paint the base part of my ladybug with my black paint. And then I'm going to paint those little wings with my crimson red paint. Now you can use any red paint you want to use. I'm also going to paint this bottom piece that's going to fit over the black area with my crimson paint as well and then set it aside to dry. Now for my letters, I decided to stain these. I wanted them to be black, and I like these black stain markers. They're just a lot less messy than paint. I love these little signs. It's such an easy way to change out your decor to give you a little bit of each season in your home. But another fun way to do these signs is to actually order some for several of your friends and everybody get together and have a sign making party. I did this one for my granddaughter and her friends and they had so much fun with this. We have all kinds of designs in our Etsy shop there is a link down below but if you don't see something you like then let me know I could probably design something specially for you I'm also going to stain the little pieces for my stand with all those little intricate cutouts in it it's just a lot less messy to stain than paint now that all of our paint is dry, we can start putting everything together. I'm going to just use some wood glue and you don't have to put a lot on here because if you do, it's going to squeeze out. I'm going to press it down and then I'm going to put some clips just to hold it, but you could also put something heavy on top of it to set. For our stand, all we do is push those two pieces together and we have a cute little stand. And then we can start putting our ladybug together. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of it. See where I made that mess, I put too much glue. Just use a clean brush and you can wipe off any excess glue. Now that our ladybug's together, we'll start adding our letters. I'm gonna put some more glue on the back and see now that the paint is dry you can see the lines that are scored onto this wood so that you can see how to line this up now you can also see that I did not adjust this bottom the way I should have and that's why ladybug looks like it's sitting at an angle if I had just moved it over just a little bit it would have sat right now we're going to glue on our ladybug and we'll clean up any glue that squeezed out and then for a finish touch I like to take one of these markers and just go around the edge to finish those up I think it looks more professional and once you do that this project is complete hey y'all it's Kay for this project, I'm going to be using four of these little frames that I got at the Dollar Tree. They are about five inches by five inches. Some of this leftover eucalyptus, I think it originally came from Hobby Lobby. These three wooden letters, I got mine at the Dollar General and they were $1 each. One 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper, some wooden beads, three white chenille stems, and instead of the green one, I did end up using a three inch grapevine wreath, some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory, and finally some Mod Podge in a matte finish. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the sawtooth hangers from all four of my little frames. It just takes a few seconds with a little screwdriver then I'm going to remove all of the stickers off of the back of these frames because I'm actually going to be using the back of the frame and not the front. And I also removed the items that were on the front. And then I went in with some spackling and I'm going to fill in all of the gaps between the cardboard and my frame. I decided to do this on all of them. 
The next thing I'm going to do is paint my three letters with my ivory chalk paint. I'm going to paint all of the edges and the front as well. These letters, by the way, are nice and thick and chunky, and they are about four inches tall. The next thing I'm going to do is give my wooden beads a good coat of the same chalk paint. This color, ivory. I just put them on a skewer, use a little poster putty in the corner, and that's the easiest way I have come up with to paint them. And then I'm going to go in and paint my frames as well. I'm going to paint the outside and then turn them over to what used to be the back but will now be the front and put a good coat across there as well. I'm not going to cover the whole thing because we're going to cover it with pretty paper. I used my paper trimmer and I cut my squares of scrapbook paper at four and three quarters inches by four and three quarters inches. You don't have to have a paper trimmer. It was just convenient to do it that way. You can always use a ruler and some scissors. Now I'm going to go in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to apply a generous coat to what was the back of my frame but is now going to be our front. But you do want to keep your coat of Mod Podge as even as possible. And then I will take a little water and spritz the back of my scrapbook paper because it's really thick. This is by Prima. It's nice paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. And we'll just smooth that out and get out all of the air bubbles. And to further assist in that, I just take a piece of this wax paper and place it on top so I don't end up tearing my scrapbook paper. And that just helps smooth everything down. And then I just did the same thing to the next three frames as well. I like to do things the easy way. So I decided I would take seven of the wooden beads and string them onto a chenille stem. And I'm going to do that three times. And I guess I didn't tell you that earlier, but you will need 21 of these wooden beads. Then I'm just going to go in with a little hot glue and I'm going to put a dot on the top of each of the seven beads. That part can get a little messy so it would be nice to have a precision tip glue gun. And then I just place my frame on top of the beads and then I'm coming in with some more glue on the bottom of the beads and then we'll glue it to the second frame. And that's how I'm going to attach all four frames together. And once all four of the frames are connected, you can either cut off the chenille stem with some wire cutters, or you can also pull it out and just put some putty in the holes at the end. I'm going to take my eucalyptus and cut off small pieces and then just cover this three inch grapevine wreath that I got some time ago at Hobby Lobby. I just keep going and placing on pieces and adding more glue until I get it covered sufficiently to look cute with my finished piece. And there it is. Now I'm going to take hot glue and I'm going to put a generous amount on the back of the grapevine wreath and then I'm going to apply it down to the second frame. Of course, we're spelling out the word home. Then I'll just use my hot glue and go ahead and attach the rest of my letters. I really like how this turned out. Shabby Chic is really my favorite decorating style. I use it mostly in my she shed though. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this small teapot that I found at Goodwill for $1.49. Some bead trim from the home decor section at Hobby Lobby. It comes already together. I had taken this apart for another project. Some bead drops from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. Some small bead trim from the home decor section. Some jump rings from the jewelry section. A button from my stash. Some fishing line 
I needed a hook, but I didn't have one. So I'm going to take this piece that had broke off of one of those Dollar Tree trellises and use it for a hook. Some Gorilla Glue and a little water to activate it. And some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was go through my buttons until I found one that I liked that would not fit through the spout of the teapot. You don't want it to pull through there. You want it to fit in snugly. Then I cut a piece of my fishing line and I'm going to tie it to the shank on the back of my button. I just did a double knot and got it really tight and then I'm going to take that fishing line and thread it through the spout on my teapot and pull it really tight until I get it lodged in there. Now I'm going to take some of this bead trim. I love this stuff. It comes put together and I use it in a lot of projects and I had took this down to smaller pieces, but I want it to be a little bit longer for this one. So we're going to put it back together. All you do is take your pliers and twist that little loop at the end. Always twist it, never pull it. Add your beads back and then twist it back into place. And now you have a longer piece. You can do the same thing to shorten it. Now I'm going to put it on my fishing line and pull it all the way up into my spout and tie a double knot and secure it really well, then trim it off. Now it looks like it's pouring out of my teapot. I wanted to have a big drop at the end and I love these little crystal drops that they have over in the wedding section. They're on a little stem. It, it looks like it goes in maybe a floral arrangement. And I took one of these and I put a jump ring on the end of it. I twisted it open and then put it through my bead and added my bead to the end of my string. Now I want to attach my lid to my teapot permanently so it doesn't fall out. So I put a little bit of water around the rim on the inside and then I add my Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue does need a little dampness to help it set up. Then I'm just going to put a drop of hot glue on each side to hold it in place until the Gorilla Glue cures. To make a hanger for this, I'm going to use some of this small bead trim that I also get from the home decor section. And I'm going to put a jump ring on the end of it. Now you always twist your jump rings open. Never pull them because you're going to distort the um, shape of them. You just want to twist them. Then I put it through the little loops of the bead garland. And I twist it back closed. And this attaches it around the handle of my teapot. Now we will just trim off the end of this. I figured out how long I wanted it to hang. And then I'm going to put another jump ring in the other end. Again, always twist your jump rings. Now we will put it on our little hook, but it's not quite a hook yet. I needed one, didn't have one, so I'm going to use this piece. I just use my pliers and twist around the end of it until it curls in. And there's our completed piece. This is such a simple piece to make, but it is so pretty. I love having the beads pour out of the teapot, and I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to hang it on my porch or hang it out by the lake, but either way, I love having this as part of my summer decor. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wood rounds that I got at the Dollar Tree. In the Dollar Tree Plus section, it costs $5. I'm also going to be using some of these tulips that I got from Michaels. They are a beautiful peach color, and it was $2 for the bunch, but I'm only going to be using just a few of them. I'm also going to be using this greenery. It is lamb's ear. I got it at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use this wooden word that spells home. I got it at Hobby Lobby and it was less than $1.50. I will be using these two wired ribbons. They both came from Michaels, both two and a half inches. One is a peach and the other is a burlap. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory, some acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. It is called Sunkissed Peach. My furniture repair marker that I got at the Dollar Tree, the color is oak. The first thing I'm going to do is section off a piece, not straight down the middle. I always make my top a little smaller than what I leave my bottom, but I'm going to measure out a three and a half inch section and draw two lines so that I can easily paint my piece. 
I'm just going to use a little masking tape at first because this isn't painted and I'm going to section off that middle section come in with my ivory chalk paint and I ended up giving it two coats to get really good coverage painting the top part and the bottom part you can paint the whole thing and then come back with your peach in the middle but it wasn't really necessary so I just did the top and the bottom and now I'm going in with my furniture repair marker and I'm just going to stain the word home. These are great markers and great for crafting because they have no odor and they work extremely well. And they're not expensive. Now I'm using painter's tape. My paint is now dry on the top and bottom and I'm going to line the two sections. And first I'm going to come in with a little more of that ivory and seal those edges so I won't have anything bleeding underneath. As soon as that is dry, I come in with two coats of this sun-kissed peach. Now this wasn't the exact shade of peach I wanted, but it was the best shade I could find. I'm going to continue looking for a different shade. I'm going to use wood glue and attach the word home right there in the center. I'm using a popsicle stick to make sure I spread it around nice and even, and it's not lumpy when I put it down onto the center of the wood round. And once I get it on there and lined up, I'm going to put something heavy on it and let it dry for a period of time. And then I cut off a couple of sections of this lamb's ear and I'm going to place one to the right and one to the left. I'm going to use glue in the middle and then a couple more places on each side of the greenery. And it holds pretty well and I just kind of hide it under the leaves. Then I'm going to take my tulips and I'm going to place two sets of three on each side what I did was kind of stagger them and make one a little taller and then I just use some floral wire and wrap it around and I kind of wished I had left my stems a little bit longer usually I get them way too long this time I did get them a little short so you can leave those stems pretty long and then once you put two sections together then I take the two wired sections together and make one big piece and to make really sure it stays on my board, I'm going to take a nail and I nail it in a little bit and then bend it over and that helps hold everything on permanently. Now let's make a bow. I'm using my Easy Bow Maker. I'm making four inch loops, two on each side, and I'm leaving the tails at about six and a half to seven inches long. And for the peach color, I'm coming in and I'm making about three inch loops, one on each side, and I'm making my tails a little shorter than the one below it. Then I'm just going to use this small zip tie and cinch it tight, cut off the excess, give it a good fluffing and dovetail those ends. Now I'm taking some twine and I'm going to run it around about twice and then tie it in the back and that'll just hide our zip tie further. Take a little hot glue, place it down there in the center and attach our bow. For a hanger, I'm just using a soda can top and I'm gluing it here on the back. Once it sets, I will also flood it on the top with a little more glue. And there's our finished piece. To me, tulips are just the perfect spring flower. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this frame that I got from the thrift store. It's really beat up, but I actually like that and think it's going to work perfectly. A piece of scrapbook paper from my stash. You can get this at any craft store. A silhouette of two birds on a limb. I googled this and printed it out. Some Waverly chalk paint in pool. A piece of carbon paper. A pencil and my graphic illustration markers. You could also use Sharpies or Jot markers. I am really crushing on birds this spring. I just love them. And when I saw this piece on Pinterest, I knew that I had to make my version of it. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the backing and the glass from our frame. We'll save that because we are gonna use it. Then I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint in the color blue, give my frame two good coats on front, back, and sides, and set it aside to dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna take the glass and put it on my scrapbook paper and cut around it. This is gonna give me my size. Then I'm gonna take my 
silhouette and lay it on top of my carbon paper and trace around it. This is going to transfer the image to my project. If you don't have carbon paper, you can always use the trick that we do where you scribble on the back of it with a pencil and then that put it on your paper and trace over it and that will transfer it as well. Once I get my image on my paper, I'm just going to use my graphic illustration markers and fill it in. Now, I love these graphic illustration markers from Hobby Lobby, but they can be quite pricey. They do have them on sale every other week, but you could just use the jot markers from the Dollar Tree and it would work perfect on this project as well. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and go over this to give it that distressed look that I love so much. Then we're going to flip it over and put our artwork in, put our glass behind it for stability, put our backing back in, close the tabs, and with that, this project will be finished. y'all this is Kay for this wreath I'm going to use one of these wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree it is 14 inches and I'm also going to be using one of the smaller wreath forms that are 8 inches across we will just need one of those I'm going to use this leftover piece of a garbage can that I got at the Dollar Tree I used it in a project recently and today we'll use it for this one I'm going to use this five and a half inch deco mesh in the yellow color. I got mine at Hobby Lobby and it does take about three rolls for this particular wreath. I'm going to be using some yellow chenille stems. It will take about 24 or so, maybe a little more. And I'm going to use these zip ties. I use about 11 of them. I got them in a multi-pack at the Dollar Tree one time. I'm using some of this rope that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's the larger diameter. I'm going to need a small piece of this scrap burlap fabric. This metal bead that I got at Hobby Lobby, they do sell a version of it at the Dollar General as well, and it's a lot cheaper. And finally, I'm going to use my tin snips, my floral wire, and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my tin snips and I'm going to cut off this band at the top. Then I'll just cut up the middle from the side here, finish cutting off the band at the top. And now I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces and piece it across the back here. I'll just use floral wire to attach it to the side of my wreath form. And here I'm just showing you that I attached it with floral wire at each of the crossbars where it meets the wire in the back and also halfway in between. Now I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut some mesh. I ended up cutting 48 for the first row that are 10 inches wide. I cut 36 for the second row and they are 12 inches long. And then finally for the third row, I cut 11 that are 10 inches long. And then I took 21 of my chenille stems and I cut them in half to attach the mesh to the wreath. For this wreath, I'm going to use a really simple technique. I'm going to fold my pieces in half and just gather them at the bottom to make petals for my flower. And at first I attach down to the wreath the first petal using a chenille stem right there at the crossbar. And I'm going to be attaching it to the second ring from the outer edge. And that's when I decided that one would not be enough in the chenille stems. So I'm going to fold and gather another petal and I'm going to attach it down into that same chenille stem. And for the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to gather it at the bottom and then I'm going to gather the second one as well and go ahead and use my chenille stem and put down two at the same time. Each time I'm just going through and doing the same thing, making sure that my petals are beside each other and not on top of each other. So that will give a nice fluffy wreath and now let's put on the next one the same way right now i'm just establishing the pattern for the wreath that i want to do and here you can see what i have so far and i'm finally placing one on the corner post and so i end up with one on each post and three 
in between. So now we have our pattern, one on each post and three in between each section. And now I'm just going to go in and start placing in three of those chenille stems in between that section and one on the center post. And then I'm going to go back and start placing in my petals. The good part about this wreath is you will have no exposed mesh to the outside of your wreath. You will have all finished edges. And I trim off the ragged edges on the inside for each of my pieces. Then I'm going to cut off my chenille stems after I twist them a few times. And then I'll just twist the little post down into the wreath, any raw parts that stick out. This is a non-frayed edge wreath. Everything will be nice and neat when you're finished. Now let's go in and place all of our chenille stems on the rest of the wreath doing three in each section. It doesn't matter if they move around because once you place them in, they will hold their shape in between. And of course, one at each post. And there's what it looks like once I placed in all the petals in all of the chenille stems so far. Now let's start the second set of our petals. I'm going to use the inner ring of our original wreath form and I'm going to twist in three chenille stems in each section. I'm not going to put one on the post, so I'll space them out just a little bit differently. But I'm going to go around the wreath form and place three in each of the sections. I'm going to be using 12 inch petals that you may recall on this second set of petals. And we're going to attach them the same way that we did the outer ring, but we'll be using 12 inch petals and three on each section. And as I complete a section of three, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten my chenille stems, trim off the ragged edges, trim off my chenille stems, place them down the sides of each section, and just kind of work as I go filling in each part. For my last row of puffs, I'm only going to use one petal at a time. I'm going to use zip ties to attach it down to the part of our garbage can here. I'm just going to trim up that end and trim up my zip tie each time as I go. And I used a total of 11 zip ties and 11 poofs as I did this intersection. This is mostly to cover up all of the little bottoms of the section in front of it. So it's not that critical and we don't have to have double sets of petals, one petal per zip tie, 11 zip ties. And I just came in about two inches all the way around. I just mainly made sure that my poofs covered the chenille stems on the second set. And here you can see the back, you can see the 11 placed in a circular pattern. Everything is nice and neat, and this is what our wreath looks like so far. For the center part of my flower, I'm going to use that small wreath form, 8 inches, that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use hot glue and attach my burlap fabric all the way around. And once it sets, I'm going to trim it off at the back, make it look nice and neat. Then we'll use some more hot glue and attach it right down into the center of our flower. Now I'm going to use my rope as extra trim all the way around, just again using my hot glue. We'll trim that off. For the bee, I'm going to take a chenille stem and I'm going to place some glue down in the bottom of it. Then I'm going to flood the top of the chenille stem with a little more glue. Then I'm going to take some medical tape and just place it right down on top and let everything set. And then I'm just going to use the chenille stem and work it down through the mesh and attach it to my wreath form. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some sandpaper, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, this tin Hello Word that I picked up from Pop Shelf, some various colors of chalk paint. I did not use the celery and I didn't use the red acrylic paint, but I did use the crimson, the malachite, the ink, and the white some twine, a jot permanent marker, and a graphic illustration marker, various red and green ribbon that I had in my stash. I have lots of different shades and lots of different sizes, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was take my sandpaper and rough up my pizza pan. This is going to help my paint stick to it and it won't pull off as I put on the different coats. Once I got it roughed up, I used my Waverly white chalk paint and I painted the whole front of this, being careful not to get any on the back. I put a really good coat on and then I'm just going to sit it aside and let it dry completely. I'm also going to paint my hello word. I was afraid that it wouldn't show up well against this white background with it being the tin color. So I used my ink chalk paint, gave it two good coats and left it to dry. Now that my paint is dry on my pizza pan, I used my ruler and I made a line about halfway down it all the way across. I did end up erasing part of it and I made a wiggly line that looks like a bite was taken out of my watermelon. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and I'm going to fill in the bottom part of this. Now you notice as I go around my curve, I'm being careful to keep it on the inside of that. I didn't want to go up on the top part of that curve because that's going to represent the white part of the watermelon. When you look at a slice of watermelon, you have that green rind, then you have that little white area, and then you have the meat. And that's what I'm trying to represent with the painting on this. We're going to give this a really good coat of our crimson paint and we will leave that to dry. Now I'm going to take that malachite green and I'm going to paint just the very top edge of my pizza pan. Again, I wanted to make sure I didn't get it on the curved edge. I only want it on the top. This is going to be the rind of my watermelon. I gave it one good coat and left it to dry. While our pizza pan's drying, I'm going to cut my ribbons. I cut them at about eight inches. I cut two of those red ones, and then I thought, wouldn't it be cute if I added some seeds onto this as well? So I took my permanent marker and I drew out some little seeds all over my red ribbon. Then I just colored those in, and I think this turned out so stinking cute. Now I'm going to finish cutting my ribbons down to the eight inches. I used about three different colors of green and four different colors of red. You use whatever you have on hand. I didn't want to have to go out and buy anything. And then once I got them cut, I'm going to layer them on top of each other, fold them in half, and I'm gonna cut them in an angle, giving them a dovetail. I do this to all of my thicker ribbons, but then once I got to those that weren't quite so thick, instead of dovetailing, I just cut those at an angle. Now we're just going to stack these up in a crisscross pattern. You're gonna put two green, two red, however you want to lay them. Once you get all of your ribbons on there, you're gonna gather it up in the center, take a piece of twine, wrap it around about three times, tie it in a knot and trim it off. And then once you fluff it up, you have a cute little messy bow. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to add some seeds to my watermelon. I'm just gonna use my pencil and trace in some, and then I'll use my permanent marker and color those in. Now, there is no right or wrong way to do this, and there's no perfect amount. I probably did add too many seeds to my watermelon, but I thought it was cute. You're just going to make a little oval and fill it in. 
Now, before I put my bow on, I did want to put a hanger on, and I had got some paint on the back of this, so I'm just going to use a piece of sandpaper and clean it up real well. I can't stand for my backs to look messy. Then I'm going to take a piece of twine, fold it in half, and tie a knot. That's going to be my hanger. I'll flood it with some hot glue on the back, and then I'm going to cut a little piece of ribbon to go over the top, and this is just going to hold it in place well. Now I'm going to add my word and my bow. I'm going to use some of my Fix All Adhesive for the Stronghold and some hot glue for the Fast Hold. I'll put the Hello right there to the side. Then I'm going to take my messy bow, put a little bit of hot glue on the back, and glue that on. And with that, this project is finished. y'all this is Kay. For today's project I'm going to be using this wooden spindle that I got in Decatur, Alabama at the Downtown Rescue Mission thrift store. It was originally sold at Lowe's and I don't know how much it cost but it was $3.99 but it was half price day so it only cost me $2. I'm going to use four of these little two by twos. They are about three and a quarter inches long each and this is the configuration I will be using them in. I'm going to need some wood filler. This is stainable and paintable. You also need some kind of board for the base. I'm using this MDF that's about 10 and a half by 10 and a half and about three quarters inches wide. I'm going to be using this metal piece. Trish found it at the Goodwill outlet probably more than two years ago and she gave it to me and said, hey, could you do something with this? Well, I've been holding on to it for a while, but today's the perfect time to use it. I'm also going to be using this wardrobe hook. I got it at the Dollar Tree recently. I'm going to use this word blessed. I ended up using the larger one. Both of these came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I'm also going to be using some spray paint for this project. It's by Rust-Oleum, satin, and the color is moss. You will also need some wood screws. Mine are one and a half inches long. I'm going to use my furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree in the color black. I'm going to use some of this heavy duty Gorilla Glue. This is the industrial string. And finally, some wood glue. That was a long list, y'all. The first thing I'm going to do is take my furniture repair marker in the color black, and I'm going to stain all the little nooks and crannies and the front of the word as well. This is just a little wooden word that I got at Hobby Lobby in a package of five different words. Now I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I'm going to go in and use a dry brush technique on the word blessed and also the top piece that I'm going to be using. I wanted it to look old and chippy but have some of the black still showing through on both pieces. Now it's time to start working on the base of this project. I've drawn an X right in the middle and that helps me find the center and I'm just going to drill a pilot hole right there in the center and then I'll drill a pilot hole in the end of my spindle as well. And then I'm going to take one of my screws and I'm going to come in first of all from the bottom here and then I'm going to start attaching it to the piece and here you can see I have done that. I also put some glue by the way at the bottom of the spindle where it touches my base. Now I'm coming in with those four small pieces and I'm going to put it in the fashion I showed you earlier making a box around my spindle. Just so you know, I did put glue on the bottom of these as well, even though I don't show it here on camera. Now I'm coming in with some wood filler and I'm going to fill in all the little cracks and where each of the pieces meets, just making it as smooth as I can and look like one solid piece. Now that everything has been sanded and is nice and smooth, it's time to go in with some paint. I'm using this spray paint in the color Moss and I'm going to use several light coats and not too heavy handed at first until I finally get really good coverage. See here at the top of the spindle, I have placed several screws to help me attach that metal piece. I'm going to wet it down with a little water. I'm just spraying the top and my screws here. And then I'm coming in with this heavy duty Gorilla Industrial Glue. And I'm going to kind of overcompensate and put a little bit more glue than you really would normally need. But the reason I do that is once I put the metal piece on there, it will swell up and fit the piece. 
I don't know why it works that way, but it does. Let's go in now and place down our piece to hold our wreath. I'm just using that hook from the Dollar Tree, drill some pilot holes, and then I'm going to place in the screws. And I need to come back later and cover these screws with some paint because it's awful dark. I'm taking the word blessed and I'm going to place it here at the bottom. It didn't look good at the top of the pole, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. My original plan was to place it between the hook and the top piece, but it really was too crowded. And with that, our project is complete. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wreath frames that looks like a bike wheel that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some florals that I got at the Dollar Tree, they are in a beautiful peach color. Some faux ivy, I'm not sure where I got this y'all, it's been in my stash for a while. Some wired ribbon, two that are two and a half inch and one that is in one and a half inch. The one and a half inch came from a wreath specialty store. The one in the middle came from Hobby Lobby and the peach color came from Michael's. Some Waverly white chalk paint. Some zip ties and chenille stem. Some pipe insulation that I got at Lowe's recently and also my hot glue gun. True confession, y'all, I have never used this bike frame from the Dollar Tree because I didn't think it just looked beefy enough to go on my door as a wreath. But I decided with a little pipe insulation, I could make it look more like a bicycle wheel and therefore it would make a cute wreath. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and paint my spokes in the very center in my white Waverly chalk paint. I made sure that some of the areas were heavier than others and left some areas a little streaky so that it would look worn. What I'm going to do is take my utility knife and then I'm going to start working my way around the wreath form and place down this foam insulation. I'm going to cut slits into the foam insulation everywhere we meet a spoke on the wheel. That way I can slide the insulation more towards the back of the frame and when I connect it, you won't notice it on the front of the wreath. The insulation cost about $3 for a six foot piece. So I did put a little washi tape on one end as I worked my way around because I didn't want to get to the end and see that I had made a lot of mistakes and had to make a bunch more cuts and maybe they would show, right? So I just worked my way around the wreath form doing the same procedure. When I got to the end, I cut it off and then I found out later I need to cut just a little more off so that I could connect it here. Then the next thing you want to do is take off this double-sided tape on each side of the pipe insulation and then we're going to stick the two pieces together towards the back so that it doesn't show on the front. And honestly, this took longer than any part of the project, y'all. The best way I found to connect it at the end there was to take a couple of zip ties and just pull it tight, just enough to make sure it keeps that round circular shape. Now it's time to make a bow for our project. I'm going to use this silky peach colored ribbon first and I'm going to make about three and a half inch loops making sure that I don't flatten them and I'm going to put two loops on each side and I'm also using six inch tails and then we'll just cut off the excess there. For the second ribbon I'm going to make my loops about the same size but I'm only putting one loop on each side and six inch tails. For the third ribbon I'm going to use five inch tails and I'm going to make my loops quite a bit smaller and I'm going to put two loops on each side and end up with that five inch tail. To cinch our bow nice and tight, I'm going to use a zip tie, turn it over on the back, I'm going to place a chenille stem inside and then I'll pull it nice and tight and cut off the excess. And then every bow needs a lot of fluffing, you need to dovetail the ends. And remember, once we get it on the wreath, we're going to need to fluff it again. Now it's time to attach it there to the wreath. I used a black chenille stem so I could hide it easily here on the back and I'm just going to give it several twists, cut off the excess, and then I'll just poke the excess down into that bike wheel. 
To prepare my florals, I'm just going to push the leaf down towards the bloom and I'm going to cut them at about four to six inches, but you really don't need more than four inches on your blooms. And I ended up using only one bunch, but you know, for your project, you can use as many as you like. I ended up going back and trimming those ends so that they would be a sharp point and then we just use this wheel, well, this insulation, to stick them right down into it, just like floral foam. For this green ivy, I'm just going to kind of twist it down right in the middle of my flowers, and then I'm going to attach it with some floral wire. And once I cut off the ends of my floral wire, I'm just going to poke it down into that foam once again. And also, I'm going to use a little hot glue on top. I just want to make sure it doesn't scratch anyone's door. Then I'll just flip it over and work on the top. I'm going to put in my three flowers once again, making sure the ends are sharp so they go right down into this foam. And once my flowers are on, it's time to put my greenery. This time I'm going to change it up just a little bit and let it kind of hang off to the side and then run kind of up the top like it's being twisted around the wheel. If it was longer, this would be great. You could wrap it around the wheel and twist it in and out. But once I got that on, I'm going to wire it on once again, place some glue on the back and poke those wires right down into the form. And there you have it, y'all. That's a simple wreath and I love it. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this toy watering can that I got from Dollar Tree, some silver metallic Rust-Oleum spray paint, some chalk paint in white ink, silver lining, and mineral, some faux succulents that I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance, a piece of floral foam, some ground cinnamon, some Mod Podge, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some paint brushes and a sponge. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all the labels from my little watering can and then take it outside and give it several coats of my metallic silver spray paint. Now that everything is dry, I am going to take my little watering can and I want to give it a more galvanized look. I do like how this metallic silver paint looks, but I think the galvanized is probably more farmhouse. And the way that I achieve that is I take a piece of sponge and I take some of my ink chalk paint, some of my white chalk paint, some of the silver linings and some of the mineral. And I cut off pieces of the sponge and I just start spouncing it on. Now I thought that this home sponge was gonna work best because it's really porous but I did not like how it was turning out. So I grabbed one of my makeup sponges and cut it in force and started using it and it started coming together and looking galvanized. Now this looks like a mess when you first get started. Just don't give up, keep going and as it starts blending together, you will start getting that galvanized look. I just kept going back and forth between my different colors. I would spounce in one and then fill in with another. Now that our little bucket is dry, I want to give it some rust. And our favorite way of doing that is taking a little bit of Mod Podge and putting it on the areas where you think rust would be and then adding some cinnamon to it. Cinnamon is the perfect thing to use to make rust. It actually looks like it and it makes everything smell amazing. Now that our little bucket is ready, I want to decorate it. So I'm going to take a small piece of floral foam and put some hot glue on it and stick it down in the bottom. And then I'm going to take some of these faux succulents and I'm going to take them apart. These are like three that are twisted together. They are a really nice quality. I can't believe they were only 99 cent a bundle. I wish I would have gotten more of them. But when you take them apart, they fit in here perfectly and they look really good. These are really high quality. I end up using four of them, which was one complete bundle and then one off of another bundle. Now I just stick them down into my foam. And there's our completed piece. I love how this one turned out. Those succulents from Hobby Lobby are such high quality. They look so good in this little can. I don't think anyone would know that this was a plastic piece from the children's section. 
Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this month's challenge, we were challenged to use a thrifted item. I'm going to be using this Lazy Susan that I got at the thrift store recently, and it was on half price day, so I only paid $2.50. And y'all, this thing is solid oak and very heavy. I'm going to use some wired ribbon to make a bow, some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and celery. This chalk paint by Krylon, I'm just going to use it as my primer. This word hello that I picked up from the Dollar General just recently for $3. This greenery that I got at Walmart for $0.97 cents each. Two green limes, I got these at Hobby Lobby. Two lemons that I also got at Hobby Lobby. Some jute twine, some screw eyes, and also a couple of nails. And finally, some floral wire, a chenille stem, a zip tie, my wood glue, and my hot glue gun. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, clean up your project if it's a thrifted item. And then I'm going to go in with this chalk paint and give it a good base coat. I didn't take the Lazy Susan part off yet. I will do that later because, look, it works so great just to turn it around and paint as you go. It made painting a breeze. And then I'm going to mark out six inches, that's the width of my quilting ruler, right through the center. And y'all, I did look on the back and make sure I kind of went with the wood grain just to make this project easier. And then I'm going to end with some white Waverly chalk paint. And I think I gave it about two coats to cover it really well just across that center part. And once I was finished, I took some washi tape and applied it to each side right on those lines so that I could begin painting the bottom of my project. But before I do that, I want to use some more of the white Waverly chalk paint and just go right around the edges so that my new paint hopefully won't bleed under the tape. And why am I using expensive washi tape? Well, that's because it doesn't rip off my chalk paint at the end like some do. And there you can see, I took that celery paint and I gave it two really good coats on the top and the bottom. Just a little touch-ups and this part will be complete. Well, we need a bow for this project and I'm going to start with about a seven inch tail. I can always trim it up later. Some three inch loops. I'm going to start with this solid yellow on the bottom and I'm going to put two loops on each side. You just twist your ribbon each time as you go between the pegs to make sure that the outside of the ribbon is always on the outside. And then I just do the same thing with the second color, making my loops just a tiny bit smaller. In retrospect, I wish I had made them a whole half inch smaller on each side. You might want to do that. So I put two loops of the green and then I come in with this last ribbon and do one loop on each side. I'm going to use a zip tie to cinch my bow up tightly, put a chenille stem in the back so that I have a way to attach it once my project is complete. And now I'm just going to dovetail those ends. You will see me trim them off several times till I get them exactly like I want them. And I just make the bottom ones a little longer than the top. And now it's time to finally take off this Lazy Susan on the back, and then it will just become another wood round. So I just used my drill and took out the screws and I'm gonna save that for another project. I'm using a couple of nails and I'm going to pound them into the back of my project, and this is the way I'm going to hang it. This is not necessarily ideal, but the screw eyes that I had would not work in this really hard wood without having a drill to drill a hole into them. So I just strung my jute around them, and then I just sort of beat the nail down, and it held perfectly. It doesn't look the prettiest in the world, but this is for me. Now I'm going to cut off about three pieces of this greenery on each of the pieces. And yes, I could have just used one piece and separated it, but I really wanted to use that stem part to help me attach all of my pieces together. So I take three off each one. I'll use them again on a later project. Then I take some floral wire and just attach it right around that middle to secure my greenery together. And then we're going to put the bow right in the middle. I'll just use that chenille stem and twist it down several times around there. And that's how I'll secure the bow right to the middle. 
Then I'm taking those little screw eyes and I'm going to attach them to my fruit. And at first I just twisted it in. And even though they're quite substantial and thick, it wasn't enough. So I'm going to use a little hot glue and just attach all of the screw eyes to my fruit. I don't know what size these are, but they're really tiny. And once I have them attached, I'm just going to cut four pieces of floral wire, twist them around my little screw eye, and then I'm just going to twist them down into my swag here. I'm going to put one lemon and one lime on each side, and I will alternate with the lemons at the top and the bottom. I just wired this whole thing together. And of course that bow is going to need a little fluffing at the end once we get this just like we want it. And there it is. For this word hello, I'm going to turn it over on the back and I'm going to cut off the string that is on there. And I will also use my wire cutters and remove all of the staples at the back. We'll just clean that up nicely and I'm going to place it centered right in my middle part. I didn't remove it from the backing because I didn't think it would hold up that it might actually break. So I'm using my wood glue right down the middle and then a little hot glue on the outside, and I'm just going to press that down centered there in the middle. I am using a larger screw eye than what I started with, and I'm going to pound it down a little bit into the top of my wood round, and then I do come back with a screwdriver and carefully screw that down and not break it off this time because I did break off a couple of them on the back. And I'm using that to hang our swag that we made. I'm going to use an additional chenille stem and just attach it around my piece and wire it to the top using that screw eye to hold it. And there it is. I love how this project turned out. A late summer project that I think is just going to freshen up my home and just make me enjoy these last sunny days of summer. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a football wreath form from the Dollar Tree, a couple of felt squares from my stash, some yellow poly mesh from Hobby Lobby, it is on sale this week, some daisies from Dollar General, and some greenery and leaves that I had left over from other projects, some yellow chenille stems from the Dollar Tree, a chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree, some wording that I printed out using the computer, and a piece of chalk and a white Arteza gel pen, a B button from Joann's, some twine, some lemon ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and some burlap ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I knew I wanted to use this football wreath form as something besides a football. That's just really not my style. So I decided to turn it into a lemon wreath. But I also knew that I needed to cover these wires. With that yellow mesh, that black wire just shows right through. And I wanted to cover it with batting, but I didn't have any. So I grabbed these felt squares that I had in my stash, and I grabbed my hot glue gun and just started gluing them around. You're going to put the hot glue directly on the wire and then just wrap it around it as tight as you can. Smooth it out. Get as many of those wrinkles out as you can. And then once it's on there, trim up the edge. Excess. Now I needed to use chenille stems to be able to hold my mesh so I grabbed my awl and I would punch a hole in each side of the wire and then take the chenille stem put one end on one side of the wire and the other end through the other side of the wire. I'm going to do three chenille stems on each end of my football. I started wrapping the mesh back and forth, but on this one side I had really bad gapping and it was wanting to slide off. So I ended up taking my hot glue gun and just gluing it down around that edge. Now be careful because it will burn you, but this solved the problem of it slipping. 
Now, I did try to continue wrapping this, but I realized that it was just in too big a mess. So I completely unwrapped it and started again. <laughs> and all I'm doing is smoothing out my mesh and kind of crumpling it up in my hand, just gathering it so that it's thicker when it lays across there. Then I pull it down the length of the football and I wrap the chenille stem around it. Then I take the chenille stem through the wires at the back and I pull my mesh back up through it and wrap it around it again and then go back down the length. Now I am going to slow this down so you can see what I'm talking about. I just wrap my chenille stem around my mesh. I put one end under one side of the wire, the other end under the other side, and then I pull it back over it and wrap it again. Let's look at this one more time. I'm going to pull it down here. We're going to pull it over and wrap our chenille stem around it twice, tighten it up. Then I pull the mesh back and I take one end of the chenille stem, pass it under the wire. Then I bring the other end through from the other way and wrap it again. Now we're just going to keep going back and forth across our lemon make sure you gather it up pretty closely so that it's going to cover you know as good as possible i could still see a little bit of the felt through there but once we get to the end i'll show you what i did for that we're going to go back and forth wrapping and then once we get to that other side i did take my hot glue gun and i glued that edge down as well and once again this is going to keep it from slipping off we're going to get to that end down there and we're going to wrap our mesh into our chenille stem again and then i just brought it back over the center a couple of times so that it would cover it up really good and you had a nice yellow look to it to make a bow for our wreath i'm going to use the bow maker that i made and I'm gonna take my burlap ribbon, I make a five inch tail, and then I make two four inch loops on each side and make one more five inch tail. Now Kay taught me one tail up, one tail down, and this works perfectly. Then I'm gonna take that lemon ribbon and we're gonna do the same thing. I made a five inch tail, I made two three and a half inch loops on each side, and then we're gonna make another tail. Now this ribbon is not wired and it is blank on the back. So you do have to make sure that you twist it so that it looks the same on all the way around. We're gonna lift that off of our bow maker, take a chenille stem, wrap around it a couple of times and twist it in tight. Then all we have to do is fluff up our bow. All good bows need a good fluffing. We'll fold those ends and dovetail them and we have a bow. To attach it to our wreath, I'm going to use my awl and put two holes in there, pull my chenille stems through and tighten them up, and there's our bow. Now I want to decorate it a little bit, so I'm going to take some of these leaves that I had left over from other projects. I thought they kind of looked like lemon leaves. I cut them apart and glue them under my bow. Then I'm going to use some of these white daisies, and I just like to cut those apart as well, and then just kind of stick them in and glue them down. You use as many as you want. I just really loved how the white of these daisies popped off that bright yellow. Once I get all of my flowers in there, I am going to start working on my little sign. And y'all know my favorite way of doing that is to color on the back of it with a piece of chalk and then trace over the words and it puts it onto my sign. Now, if you've got a good handwriting, you can totally freehand this, but I don't trust my dimensions. I end up having to do it too many times. So this is my favorite way of making wording on projects. Once you get those transferred over, I'm just gonna use my white gel pen and trace over it and that's going to fill it in and it gives me an adorable little sign. I'm gonna take one of those little B buttons and I clipped off the shank and glued it onto the corner of my sign. Then I take a piece of twine, fold it in half and tie a knot. Then I'm gonna fold it in half again and push it through the opening on my sign, pull the ends through the loop and tighten it up and that gives me a cute little hanger. Now I did decide it was gonna hang too long so I'm gonna tie another knot to shorten it up and then we'll trim that off and we'll use a little bit of hot glue on that knot and glue it right up under our flower so that it hangs off. I'll use another drop of glue to hold it in place. To make a hanger, I'm gonna take another piece of twine, fold it in half and tie a knot into it. 
Then I'm going to take the looped end and push it up under one of those wires. I'll pull the ends through the loop and tighten it up. I figure out how long I want it to hang and tie a knot, trim that up, and with that, this project is finished. This is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this home sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. It is about 14 inches tall by six and a half inches wide, and it is a nice quality wood. I'm going to be using this four inch ribbon that I got at Michael's. It is made of fabric and it has peaches on it. I'm also going to be using some wired ribbon and some floral wire to make a bow. I'm also going to be using this scrap piece of fabric so that we can make our project versatile and use it in two ways. I'm also going to be using this sign from the Dollar Tree. It is more narrow than the first sign, but it is longer, so I will be needing to cut it off. I'm going to use my Waverly White Chalk Paint. I'm going to use some heavy duty Velcro and also my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is give it two really good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint and the most aggravating of course was getting in between all of those areas of the letters. I'm leaving mine white so it will be more versatile. I'm going to draw off on my board where I want to cut it out. I'm going to remove this little heart here. We can use that later on for a different project. And now you can see I've taken it to my garage and I cut off the top piece. I'm going to be using it, of course, on the back of the first sign. I'm going to draw out where I want my peach fabric to go. Because it wasn't wide enough to just put straight down the sign, I'm going to have to cut it in five inch pieces. And that's what I did. I cut four five inch pieces. If you have fabric, you don't have to do that. It's already done for you when you cut the width. Then I'm going to use Mod Podge place it down on my sign, and I'm going to put down my pieces. Later, I learned I was going to have to trim the edges of all four pieces to make everything lie nice and flat. And I did make one mistake here, and that is I should have painted this board white on the back. So if you use this type ribbon, make sure you go ahead and paint your board white because your ribbon will be more vibrant once it dries from the Mod Podge. Here you can see on the back, I've added the dark fabric. I'm going to use Mod Podge and coat it on the top real well, and then we'll put it aside and let it dry. This is going to give us the ability to have two looks for this project. And of course, I did have Mod Podge on the bottom and the top for this black piece. And I'm going in now and I'm just going to trim up those edges. Everything is nice and dry and stiff so it's easy to cut. And now I'm showing you how it looks with the peach fabric behind the home sign. And then we can turn it on the back and see how the black and white fabric is going to look. I'm going to take this soda can tab and I'm going to place it here in the top middle of my sign. I'm just going to use hot glue to attach it and then I'll flood it with hot glue on top. And that's how I'm going to attach my bow to my project. I'm going to use heavy duty Velcro just like I showed you earlier. I'm going to cut pieces to put in each corner of the sign. I almost put mine too far over to the right, so watch your placement with whatever sign you use behind it. But I cut off the four pieces. I placed the second piece on top, which is the loop part. And then I'm going to peel off the backing, place it on all the corners. Once I get that done, we'll just peel off this backing from all four pieces, and then we'll place down our peach fabric. I'm not going to put the Velcro on the black piece right now because that will just keep my piece finished in the back. Let's make a different kind of bow. I'm going to cut first of all this first ribbon at 24 inches. I'm going to go ahead and dovetail the ends and fold it in the middle. For my second ribbon, I'm going to cut it at 22 inches and do the same thing, dovetail the ends, fold it in the middle. And for the third ribbon, I'm going to cut it at 20 inches and do the same thing. Now I'm going to use my Bow Dabra. I'm going to take some floral wire, cut off a piece, and just place it down in the bottom of the Bow Dabra before I start. I'm going to fold my ribbon in half again. I'm going to fold it over from the right, and then I'll fold it over from the left. The good thing about this type bow is you never have to trim it up when you're done if you place it right into the Bow Dabra. Here's our second ribbon. Make sure that the loops are just a little bit shorter than the ones beneath it. 
and then we'll come in with the third ribbon same thing we're going to place it down at the halfway mark and make sure our loops are just a little bit smaller then we'll take it off of the bodabra we're going to twist that floral wire nice and tight and of course we'll fluff our bow and we'll fluff it again when we put it on the sign i'm going to cut off this little piece of ribbon that i showed you earlier and just tie it around there to hide the wire and then we'll attach it down to the top of our piece here and so we can always change it out later the bow and the backing as many times as we want At Crafty Cousins, you will always find a variety of crafts and styles on our channel. Trish loves wood projects and thrift flips, and I love paper projects and wreaths. But we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, and much more. There is a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. y'all it's Trish. Kay and I were challenged by our friend Jackie over at Bless Beyond Measure to use a thrifted item in one of our projects. I found this metal bird picture frame at Goodwill Outlet and I had to have it. It was regular $160 when it was at Kohl's and they wanted $19.99 for it at the regular Goodwill store but I got it at the outlet for 59 cent. This shabby chic print that I purchased from an Etsy store called Creative Bell for $6. I took it to Staples and had it printed for $1.20. I will put a link to the shop down in the description box below if you would like to purchase a copy. Some Waverly chalk paint in ivory. Some Mod Podge. Some Distressed Oxide ink and a blender. Some sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and a paintbrush. So the first thing I did was clean up my frame really good and this is metal. I don't know if I told you guys that or not. I really like how it looked. I love the print that's on it but it really did not fit the shabby sheet decor that I am putting in my bedroom. So I thought we would flip this into something that went more with what my aesthetic is. So the first thing I did was give it a good coat of my ivory chalk paint and it did take about a coat and a half. The first one was a little streaky in some areas so I just went back once it was dried and touched up those areas and then I left it to completely dry. Now we're going to take our print and work on it. I like to tear the edges of this to give it more of an old antique feel. And the way I like to do that is I just take some regular water and a paintbrush and I paint along the edges. And then once the water soaks into the paper, I tear it. Someone told me that this is called deckling. All I know is I love it. I like using the water because it helps me control how much of the print I'm actually tearing off. And speaking of the print, you probably noticed that this is a different print than the one I showed you in the beginning and the one that I actually used in the project. What happened was when I came back after my frame had dried and I started working on my project, I thought I turned the camera on, but unfortunately I did not. All I did was take a picture. It was not recording. So I had this print that I had actually designed and was going to use in this project. Um, but I like the other one better. But I did have it printed out while I was at Staples. So I thought, well, I will go ahead and um, use this one to show you what I did. So all I'm doing is tearing these edges. And then once I get those edges tore, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink and my blender. And I go back over them and ink them up. And this gives them a nice distressed look. It helps them to pop out from the background. And it makes it look more old and aged. Now, y'all, I like this print too. I will be keeping it to use for another project. Once I get that finished, I flip it over and I mist the back of it with some water in a misting bottle. And all this does is soften up the paper and get it prepared for decoupaging. 
Now there's my project. <laughs> so all I do is put down a coat of Mod Podge into the center of the frame where I'm wanting to put my print and I spread it out with my brush until it's nice and thin and then I apply my picture right into the middle. I smooth it out with my fingers the best I can and then I take my brayer and I just go over it and make sure there's no bubbles, no air pockets. Um, you can also do this with your fingers. Once I'm happy with that, I put another light coat of Mod Podge on top and let it dry. Now I'm going to come back once it's completely dry and I take a piece of my sandpaper and this is just the sandpaper you get from the Dollar Tree and I go around the edges of this and on the scroll work and the bird and I just knock off some of the paint. I make it look like it is old and it's been used and loved and honestly this is a personal preference. How much you distress your project just depends on your taste and once I finish distressing it this project is finished and there's our finished project I love this one so much it totally fits my aesthetic I have started slowly changing my bedroom into shabby chic and I think this fits in perfectly this print from creative Bell is absolutely gorgeous and it made this project perfect Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pair of kids boots that I found at Goodwill. They were marked $2.99, but red was the color of the day, so I got them for $1.50. Some assorted florals from my stash. These came from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and even from the thrift store. Some ribbon, I got this one from Dollar Tree. Some floral foam, some twine, some super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I loved these little boots. I love how bright yellow they are. It's just so summery and I thought we could make the cutest wreath out of them. Now they are dirty. So I'm going to take them in the kitchen, spray them with some bleach cleaner and let them sit and then use a Mr. Clean eraser and clean them up. Now we have some clean boots. They aren't perfect, but they're pretty close, and I think they are so adorable. I'm going to be putting them together to make a wreath. So I'm gonna take some floral foam, and I just use a metal ruler and cut my floral foam down to fit inside my boots. I'm gonna use a little bit of my super glue fix all adhesive and a little bit of hot glue to glue it down in there so the flowers don't pull it out once I start putting them in. This is just gonna give it some security. Now is the fun part, we get to start decorating. I'm just taking these florals. A lot of them are from projects that I done earlier this year. These tulips are from the carrot wreath that I did. I just like to cut them apart and stick them down in there. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I just put them in until I like how they look. I honestly think that that is how you do floral arrangements. You just do it until it's pleasing to your eye. I would pull things out and stick more in. I really love these happy white daisies that I had. I think they just make everything seem brighter. And then I also knew that I was going to want to put some flowers coming out of that little hole in the front these boots have those holes that help to pull them on and I wanted it to look like these were just spilling out of our boots so I cut some off and I stuck them down in there and then I glued in some of this little fern and I just kept going until I was happy with how it looked now I'm going to take some of my super glue fix all adhesive and some hot glue and I put it at the top of the boot and then I stick them together the way that I want them to hang. I was afraid that it wasn't going to stay with just the glue though. So I took a piece of twine and I ran it through those two holes and tied it into a double knot. And then I'm just going to wrap it around through there about four or five times. And then I'll tie it into another double knot and trim it off. This is just gonna help it to hold hold a little bit better. Now I'm going to take some clamps. These are the ones from the Dollar Tree and I put them at the top and then I put something under that top boot to help hold it in place and I left it to dry overnight. 
to make a hanger for this, I'm going to use some ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I liked that it had the yellow in it as well, but I didn't have as much of it as I thought I did. I wanted to be able to make a big bow to go at the top of my hanger, but I didn't have enough. So what I ended up doing was taking the ends of my ribbon, running them through that little hole at the back and tying them into double knots. I did do these separately. And then I'm just gonna pull it up and make a knot close to the top. It'll leave me a little loop for hanging. And once I do that, this project will be finished. It's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this little wood round that I got at the Dollar Tree. It says welcome on it. And just so you know, I tried to remove the welcome before I painted it, but it would not come off without breaking. So we're going to use it this way. I'm also going to be using a couple of these glass stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree, the watermelon ones. This watermelon ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. I think it was 50% off. It's one and a half inches wide. It is not wired. I'm going to be using an assortment of ribbons in red and green that I pulled from my stash. They vary from one and a quarter inches to three eighths. I'm going to use this scrap piece of fabric in red and white gingham. You could also use scrapbook paper. For paints, I'm going to use my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paint in bright red and pop green. I'm going to use some Mod Podge, also some Fabri-Tac, and my hot glue gun. Just so you know, this wood round is eight and a half inches across. I'm going to remove this tie at the top and I'll just save it to use later. Then I'm going to come in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give the front across the word in between, all of the edges as well, a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. When the paint becomes dry, I'm going to draw a straight line above and below the word welcome, spacing it about a quarter of an inch from the word. Then for the top part, I'm going to come in with my Mod Podge and I'm going to be very generous, but very even and give it a nice coat of Mod Podge. And then I'll place down my fabric, making sure that I'm straight across my line. Once I get it like I want it, I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge on the top as well. Now I'm going to work on the bottom here. I'm going to use a little painter's tape and place it there across my line. And then I'll use my white paint to seal it. And then once that's done, I'm going to come in with my pop green and I'm going to give it about three coats. Now that my fabric is dry, I'm going to cut that off at the top. And now I'm going to come in and paint the word welcome with the red. This color is called Bright Red and it took three coats for really good coverage. I'm just using a tiny brush and we'll just make it work. I'm going to cut off a piece of ribbon long enough to fit across my line here. And then I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac and place on a generous amount. And then I'll place it down on my sign here. And I'm going to give it a lot of smoothing to make sure there are no bumps or wrinkles. Now it's time to make a messy bow to go on top of our sign. I'm going to cut all of my pieces at five inches. You can cut yours however you would like. I'm using three green ribbons and three red ribbons. I'm going to place them on an X, each one crossing them one on top of the other. And once I get my pattern like I want it, I'll just squeeze it there in the middle and get it gathered. I'm going to tie a piece of twine around the middle, the one that came off the sign, and now we can do lots of fluffing. For my wider ribbons, I'm also going to cut them at an angle so that we can dovetail the ends, cutting from the center to the edge. And that's what it looks like so far. Now I'm going to take that extra piece of ribbon that I cut off and I'm going to tie a knot right in the middle, place a little glue here on my twine, and I'm going to place that knot and squeeze it around my bow. Once it's a little bit dry, I'm going to tie a knot in the back. And now it's time to trim up our sign. Just going to round off the sides of that ribbon. Place our bow here at the top with a little hot glue. I'm going to use a soda can tab and bend it in the middle. Place some glue on the back. Now we're going to use our stickers. I'm going to put summer so it will say welcome summer. 
and also this little piece of watermelon here on the corner. And with that, our project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to be using tissue. Yep, regular old bath tissue works just fine. A balloon, I got this pack from Dollar Tree. Some white school glue, I got mine from Walmart. Some water. Some kind of flat flowers, I got this pack from Hobby Lobby back in the paper section. It's on sale for 50% off every other week, but I think dried flowers would look pretty too. A bowl for mixing and a measuring cup, some ribbon or cord of choice, some kind of LED lights, I got this pack from the Dollar Tree, something to punch a hole with, I'm going to be using an awl but you could also use a paper punch, and a bowl to hold your balloon while you're working. So the first thing you're going to do is blow up a balloon and tie it on the end. How big you make it is how big you want your light to be. Now we're going to mix our glue and our water half and half. I used a quarter cup of each. Make sure that you mix it really good. And then we're going to take our tissue and just start tearing off pieces. Now, I did take time and separate out my plies on this, but for this first layer, I would suggest that you don't do that. It becomes so thin that it makes it hard to work with and it does tear apart if your brush keeps going over it. So I did end up just kind of clumping it up and making it thicker. And then once I had finished all of this that I had separated, I ended up just using regular paper without separating it. I think that worked out so much better for this bottom layer. Now you're going to want to keep going over this and building it up. I didn't want to have really thin areas because once it dries it's pretty tough but I didn't want to have any thin patches that the lights could fall through because this is going to be holding your lights especially on the bottom. Now I went a pretty good piece up my balloon um, almost to the top honestly because I'm going to be trimming that off and I wanted to make sure that this was deep enough. You're just going to keep wrapping pieces around. You can see that at this point I had actually started clumping it up, making it um, thicker and more wrinkled because I like that texture and I thought that it gave it a really nice look. So you do you, you just put it on there until you're happy with it and you have a good base built up. Once you're happy with your base layer, now you're going to start adding your flowers and your greenery in here. I just kind of stuck them in the different places that I wanted and then you put your glue over it to make sure that they stay down. I used this pack from Hobby Lobby and I have to say I was really happy with it. I think they're really pretty flowers and if this is not your colors, they had them in purples and in blues. They had several different options for this and I just love it. I love how they show through. But I also think that dried flowers could be really pretty. You know, kind of crumble them up on there and cover them up just like you do when you're making paper. Once you get your flowers down and you're happy with how it looks, then you're going to take another layer of your tissue and you're going to apply it over your flowers. You want to make sure that they're covered. Now for this layer, I did only use one ply. You could probably get by with both plies, but I didn't want to make my flowers too foggy. I wanted them to show really well and I liked how it looked with the one ply. Just make sure that you get everything covered really well so that when it dries, none of your flowers are going going to pop off. I continued doing this until I had everything covered and then once it's all covered you're going to set it aside and let it dry for at least 12 hours. I left mine to dry overnight. So now it's the next day and it's completely dry. It's just hard as it can be. So we're going to punch a hole in our balloon and let it deflate and it comes right out. And then I'm going to take my awl and punch a hole in each side. Now you could easily use a paper punch for this, but I like using my awl. 
Now we're going to take our ribbon and we're going to cut off two equal pieces. You make this as long as you want this to hang. Just keep in mind that you will be doubling it up. I cut mine at 34 inches, but you don't have to use that measurement. Now I'm going to singe the ends so that it doesn't unravel. And then I just kind of fold it in half and stick it through my hole. And I'm going to pull it until it's even on both sides. Just be careful that you don't rip your paper. It's pretty sturdy, but you could still rip it. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side, pulling it until it's even. And then we're going to take our ribbons, straighten them out, pull them all the way up to the top and make sure that they meet at the ends. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot close to the end of this and that's going to give us our hanger. I love how this looks, y'all. All we've got left to do is to put our fairy lights in. I already have my batteries in it. And with that, this project's finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use the inside of an embroidery hoop. This one is six inches, but you can use any size that you would like. Some wooden beads, how many you need will depend on how large your embroidery hoop is and the size of your beads. I'm using nine. I have eight small ones and one medium size. Some lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree some floral stems. You can use anything you like. I ended up using these little purple lavender ones and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This project is so simple, but it comes out so cute. All you're going to do is remove your inner hoop, put the outer hoop up somewhere. We'll end up using it in another project. And then you're going to take your wooden beads and you're going to fit them across. You want them to touch from one side to the other. Once you know how many you need, all you're going to do then is put a little bit of hot glue on one side of your hoop and put your bead in it. Now make sure that the whole of this is going up and down. We're going to put our little floral stems through there. So you want to make sure that your holes are straight. Now I am using a little ruler across here, but the only purpose for this ruler is to keep my beads from rolling around. I want them to stay in place until that glue sets. I just keep going across from one side to the other. I put a little dab of glue on one side of my bead and then I stick it into the other one and let it set. When you get to that last bead, you're going to put a drop of glue on each side and then glue it to the other side of your embroidery hoop. Now we're going to take some of our lace ribbon and make a hanger. I just figured out how far I wanted it to hang down and I cut a piece off and folded it in half. Then you're going to put a little bit of hot glue on the underside and glue the lace ribbon into it. I'm going to tie a knot in the top of this and trim off my ends and I have my hanger. Now you're just going to decorate it. You can use any florals that you want to use. I found that the longer, skinnier ones look better in this. So that's how I ended up using these little lavender pieces. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree. I just cut off some pieces. You see, I end up taking some of the leaves off because I want them to stick all the way through. And then I just put them through my beads. Now you can fill all of your beads. You can skip some beads and have some breathing room in here. I actually thought it looked pretty that way, but you know me, I can't leave anything alone. So I grabbed some of this greenery I had and I ended up cutting some little pieces of it and filling in the middle and this project was finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using an item that I got at the Downtown Rescue Mission Thrift Store in Decatur, Alabama before I move. And that's this huge embroidery hoop. It is an oval shape. It's about 28 inches long and about 18 inches wide. It is really thick and really old and I just love it. 
I'm going to be using these mixed florals that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. If you're nervous about mixing your florals, this is the easiest way to do it because it's already done for you. I'm going to be using some of this lamb's ear, also came from Hobby Lobby, also was 50% off. I'm going to be using some floral foam. I got mine at the Dollar Tree. I couldn't find it in the rectangular shape, so we'll just make this one work. I'm also going to be using some wired ribbon. I have the solid pink and also the organza pink. They are all wired. I will need a chenille stem, a zip tie, my wire cutters and some floral wire, and finally my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is take some baby wipes and I'm just going to give my hoop a really good cleaning. You could also paint it or stain it, but I wanted to leave mine in its natural state. I'm going to take this floral block and I'm going to cut it in half so that I have two pieces. If you have the rectangular one, you wouldn't have to do this. I'm going to glue the two pieces together. Then I'm just going to lay my embroidery hoop down onto the pieces that I've glued together and I'm going to take a pencil and rough out the round part of this hoop. And then I'm coming in with my knife once again and I'm going to cut off the negative pieces that I don't need. And now I'm just going to fit it back into the embroidery hoop using a little glue. I'll attach it here at the bottom. And once the glue sets up, I'm going to come in with some floral wire and secure it down to my frame just to make sure it doesn't move around when we put all of those florals on. And if you wanted to, you could add a little more of this foam to the right and left, but the way I did it, it's really not necessary. Now I'm coming in with my lamb's ear and I'm going to attach it with my floral wire right down into the side of my frame. And of course, I'll secure it behind the leaves with a little hot glue as well. I just use the leaves to hide the wire. I twist it on the back, bring it down the side. I'll attach it in about three spots. And then once I get to the middle, I'm going to cut that off, place a little hot glue, wire it down back into the frame once again. And then we'll start on the right side so that our lamb's ear is matching. We don't want it to be backwards and when it's on the right side. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to attach it three places on the side of the frame, come in at the bottom, attach it again with some floral wire and a little hot glue as well. And then I did go back on the back and I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and secure. And then I put a little glue on top of all of the wire and then we'll come back and cut off all of the excess because we don't want anything to scratch our door. And there's what we have so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and prepare my florals. I'm going to push all of the leaves toward the blooms and I am leaving the stems kind of long at this point because some of them do need to stay long to put on the side of the wreath and some of them I will cut to two inches so that I can place them down into the foam. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to go in, first of all, in the center and place one of these hydrangeas. And the hydrangeas seem a little flimsy in this project. So later you'll see me there, I'm going to add the second one. And eventually I will add the third one. So kind of like a triangle. And the longer ones here, I am placing them on the side, starting out with the berries. Then I'm placing in those daisy looking ones above that. And I used floral wire to twist them down onto the frame. You can see that at this point. But I did twist all of them down with wire so they would stay on well. You can also glue your florals if you would like to do that. And then I just keep going until I work around that middle and get everything covered up. This one I'm going to cut in half and use both pieces to the right and the left. For the boat for this project, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, starting out with this pretty pink satin ribbon. I'm just going to cut about a 20 inch piece and lay it down into my Easy Bow Maker because I want to make sure it's on the back part of my bow. Then I'm coming in with some more of that ribbon and I'm going to make five inch loops on each side, two of them on each side. And it does move around a lot because it's the satin material, but it is wired. And for this piece, I didn't have a whole lot. So again, I'm cutting a piece about 18 inches this time, and I'm going to place it down into the bow maker. So we'll just do that as an extra ribbon tail. Then I'm coming in with my last ribbon, which is just under an inch wide, and I'm going to make about three loops on each side, a lot smaller than the loops below it. And I'm going to keep my ribbon tails just a little bit shorter than the ones below it as well. 
I'm going to cinch everything tight with a zip tie. I will place a chenille stem in the back before I pull it completely tight. That's how I will attach it to the side of the frame. I'm going to cut off that excess, give it a good fluffing, cut off those little pieces that were in the center, attach our bow to the top of our hoop, and then we'll use the excess of our chenille stem as our hanger as well. And there we have it. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of the small birdhouses from the Dollar Tree a candlestick from the thrift store, some branches I broke off of a bush in my yard, some florals from the Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in white and pink, some of these jewel stones from the Dollar Tree, a tin sheet pan from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my little birdhouse and give it a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I am going to be covering the top of this birdhouse, but I wanted to give it a good coat of paint just in case anything showed. Then I also gave my candlestick two coats of my white chalk paint and set it aside to dry. Now I'm going to take some of those little jewel stones from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue them all around the bottom edge of my candlestick. I thought these were really cute because they kind of look like sunflowers, so I thought it would give a good detail to our little birdhouse. These do have an adhesive back on them, but when you try to take it off with the adhesive on it, it pulls up that little zigzag part, so I just peeled these off the adhesive and used some hot glue. Now once I got those on there, I'm going to take my white chalk paint and my brush and go over these and just kind of blend it in with my candlestick. I wanted the texture but not the color. Once that's dry, I take my ballet slipper pink chalk paint and my chippy brush and I start distressing my candlestick. I wanted it to be pink, but I didn't want it to be a solid pink. I did feel like that I got too much of the pink on there though, so I started going back and forth using some of the white and some of the pink until I got it the way I wanted it to look. Then I took my little birdhouse and I painted the body of it as well. I want to leave the top and that little bottom part white. Now I'm going to take this sheet pan that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut a piece of it out and I measure it to make sure that it's going to fit on top of my birdhouse. I went ahead and kind of bent it down around it so I would have some cutting lines and I trimmed it up. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I just rub over it really well on the front and I flip it over and do it on the back and I go back to the front until I get it smoothed out and get all the texture out. Now you can leave this like it is and use the texture that comes with it, but I want to do my own texture. Here I'm showing you that you can use one of those embossing tools from the Dollar Tree and draw your own texture in it. But for this case, I'm actually going to use the little embossing machine that I got a couple of years ago. I'm just going to take my little piece of tin and put it in between the embossing plate. And then I stick it inside the plates that go with the machine and run it through my machine just by turning the handle. This applies pressure to it and it's going to make the design on my tin. Now be careful with this and don't cut yourself. It's not extremely sharp, but it is a little bit sharp. Now I took my piece and I fit it around the top of my birdhouse and then I just use some of my hot glue and I glue it down and press it really well. This one had those little ridges in it, so I had to make sure that I conformed it to those as well. Once I got it attached to it, I just used my scissors and I trimmed off those edges. 
Now I'm going to take that little embossing tool and I just kind of run over these edges and it just kind of folds them down and makes them so that they're not sticking out and they're not sharp. It fits it into my birdhouse. We will attach our birdhouse to our candlestick just using some of our hot glue. I put it right there in the center and hold it until it's set. Now I'm going to take one of these little branches. I got this off of a bush in my yard. And when you do this, you want to make sure that it's green. If it's already fallen off of your bush, it may be dry and it's going to break when you try to do this. But if you pick it off of the bush, it's still alive and green. So it will bend the way you want it to. Now I was having trouble getting it to stick down. So I grabbed these little pink flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just used those to hold it onto my candlestick. I cut them off individually. I put a little bit of hot glue on the back and then stick it down over it onto the candlestick and it held this down perfectly. Now I'm gonna put down my little branch there and attach it with one of my flowers. And I just keep moving up my birdhouse and attaching the flowers until I like how it looks. Once I got that piece put on, I decided I wanted another little piece right there in the front of the birdhouse. So I cut another little piece off and glued it down. And then I'll add one more little flower up there to the top to hold it to. And there's our completed project. This one was really simple, but I love how it turned out. I love the detail that you get in that tin. I think it makes an absolutely gorgeous tin roof. But again, you do not have to have an embossing machine to do this. You could print off a pattern and use your embossing tool from the Dollar Tree or even a pen and get the same kind of detail. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old piece of wood that I got from beside the road. I saw where someone had took a fence down and they had piled up all of these boards. And every time I come across one of these, I always stop and go through it because I love this kind of old wood for these projects. A pocket from an old pair of jeans, some flowers that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Walmart. You can use anything you have that fits your decor. This welcome word from Pop Shelf. You can also get these at pretty much any craft store. Some wood glue, a furniture repair marker, some twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly White chalk paint, a little piece of ribbon, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this is going to be one of the simplest projects that we do, but I absolutely love how they come out. The first thing we're going to do is cut the pocket off of a pair of old jeans. I always save my old jeans for projects like this. And then once you get it off, you're just going to trim it up, making sure that you get all of those edges clean. You want it to look like just the pocket. Now I'm going to take my wood and I figure out where I want this to lay and I'm going to take my word and lay it kind of on top of it. I wanted it to go over the edge of it and then once I'm happy with it, I flip that pocket up and I use some of my wood glue on the back of it and then I'm going to take some hot glue and put around it as well. My wood glue is going to bond it to my wood but that hot glue is just going to hold it in place until it sets. Before we do anything else to the front of our sign, I do want to go ahead and add a hanger. I just take a piece of twine, tie a knot in it, making a loop, and then I'm going to flood that with some hot glue and put a piece of ribbon over it. I press it down really well and then trim off the ends and we have a hanger. For my little word, I took one of those furniture repair markers that you get from the Dollar Tree and I just stained the top of it. I thought I was going to leave it like this, but then I decided I wanted it to look a little more rustic and this was just a little too pristine. So I took some of my Waverly white chalk paint and a chippy brush and I went over it real well and gave it a heavy distressing. Now we are going to use some of our wood glue and some of our hot glue and we're going to attach our word to the bottom of our sign. 
I put the wood glue in just some strategic places and then I went back with my hot glue and now I'm going to put it so it just kind of overlaps my pocket a little bit and hold it until it sets. The last thing I want to do is add some flowers to my pocket. I grabbed these white and kind of red and well really more purple than blue but I thought that it gave the same feel as the 4th of July or patriotic and y'all know I love that look so that was why I went with these. I cut them apart and then I just start poking them down into the pocket. I just kind of push them in there until I'm happy with how they look. Y'all know we call this poking posies. Once you get all of your flowers into your pocket and you're happy with it, this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm finally getting around to making my Easter centerpiece for my table. I'm going to use this scrap piece of one by two, but if you know anything about lumber, you know it's really more like one and a half inches by half inch wide. I'm going to use two of these one gallon paint stirrers. I think I got them at Lowe's. I'm also going to be using three pieces of this two by two lumber that was some scraps, and they are cut two inches long. I'm using three of these glass yogurt containers, the Wee Yogurt, and three of these votive candles. This is what I had in my stash, but you could also use those battery-powered candles that you get at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use several wired ribbons. They come in two and a half inch width and also one and a half inch width. I'm going to use these ranunculus that I got at Walmart. They're really a hot pink color. The camera doesn't do them justice. I'm also going to be using a little bit of this baby's breath that I got at Walmart as well. Some deco mesh. I have some snowball mesh in the natural color and then this pink color. They both came from Hobby Lobby and they're 10 inches wide. I'm also going to be using some chenille stems and some zip ties as well, and my hot glue gun. And I forgot to tell you that I do need some wood glue to start this project. The scrap piece of lumber I have is 13 inches long, so I just indicated right there in the middle where that was, and then I'm going to put on some of this wood glue, and then I'm going to use just a little popsicle stick to spread it out evenly, kind of like making a sandwich. Then I'll come in with my two paint stirrer sticks and I'm going to meet them there in the middle of my scrap piece of lumber. I'll just use some clamps on the side to hold it tight and then I'm going to let it dry for several hours. I'm going to be using my heavy duty stapler because it takes brads as well. But first I'm going to use a little wood glue and I'm going to secure the first two pieces to the right and left of that center piece then I'll turn it over on the back and that's when I'm going to use my heavy duty stapler with the brads and staple them down into the block. It just gives another way of holding it and it will just be a tighter fit. Then once I get those two on and they're totally secure I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to place the third block centered in the middle and again I'm just going to use my wood glue. And these are the blocks that I will be setting down my wee glasses to hold my candles. Now that the wood glue is dry, it's time to start attaching chenille stems. I'm going to place six total onto the piece. I will place one at each end, halfway between the end and where the wood block starts, and then two on each of the sections that are between two of the wood blocks. Just giving them a good tight twist. The next thing I wanted to do is cut my mesh and I'm going to cut this 10 inch mesh into 10 inch pieces. I will need six of the natural color and also I will need six of the pink color. And y'all, the best way I have ever found to cut mesh is with a rotary cutter. I'm going to be using a really simple method for putting my mesh on. I'm just going to fold in those raw edges and kind of tuck them and then I will just gather it in the middle, again, raw edges in, 
ruffle it in the middle, and then cross them in an X. I did figure this out in just a minute, and I want to make sure it is in an X pattern. And here I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to put on the second set of my mesh, and I'm slowing it down here a little bit so that you can see that I gathered it in the middle, and then I will speed up this process because I'm just doing the same thing over and over until I finish my sixth set of chenille stems. Every time, just making sure that I turn the raw edges down. And that's what it looks like so far. The next thing I'm going to do is cut some ribbon tails for my project. I chose four of the ribbons, and I'm going to cut 10 inch pieces. I'm going to use two of this green with the white polka dot. Then I'm going to cut two in this hot pink color. This time I just cut 20 inches, folded it in half, and cut it again, and that's how I got my two pieces. And I did make a mistake and cut double of what I needed. I guess I need to make one for a friend when I'm done with this first one. But you only need two of each of the four colors. Now I'm going in with my third color, and I'm using this burlap ribbon in this hot pink. This came from Hobby Lobby. And this is some ribbon that actually came out at Christmas at Hobby Lobby. And I'm cutting two 10-inch pieces of that ribbon as well. And once I got all my ribbons cut, I folded them in half right sides together. And again, you only need two of each color, not the four that I cut. And as soon as we have those cut, we're going to fold it in half at the bottom and cut a V, cutting from the fold to the outside edge. And that's how we're going to dovetail all of the ends of the ribbon that we're going to use in this centerpiece. Now I'm going to start placing them into the centerpiece. I'm going to take the hot pink one and place this colorful one on top of it at an angle, kind of at an X, and then I place it down into my chenille stem and I give it a couple of hard twists. Here I'm going in with the next two colors and again I'm placing them on an X pattern, placing them into the chenille stems and then twisting them tight and I'm only going to do four in this manner. Two to the left and two to the right of the center. And that's because I'm going to make some bows to go to the right and left of the center post. I'm going to be using my Easy Bow Maker to make my bows. I'm going to use, first of all, this burlap ribbon in this hot pink color. And I'm doing four inch loops on each side. And I'm doing seven inch tails. Now I'm coming in with this green color. I didn't have enough because I cut, you know, those ribbon tails by mistake, but that's okay. I just took the piece I had left, I cut it in half, and I'm going to use one on this bow and one on the next bow, and I just placed it right down into my Easy Bow Maker, and then I'm coming in with my black and white ribbon. I'm making my tails a little bit shorter than the last ones, and then also my loops a little bit shorter, and then I'm coming in with the pink color, and I'm matching what I did with the black and white ribbon. Then I'm going in with the Harlequin ribbon, which is also a black and white. And I'm making my loops just a little bit smaller and my tails just a little bit shorter. And then for my final piece, I'm going to do two loops on each side and I'm going to make those much shorter than the one below it. Coming in with a zip tie on the back here, turning it over. I'm going to place a chenille stem inside, pull my zip tie tight, cut off the excess, and then turn it over, give it a good fluffing, and dovetail the ends that are left. And then off camera, I'm going to make a second bow just like this bow. And here's the second one. I think they're pretty close. Now I'm going to come in with a pencil, and I'm just going to twist down my chenille stems. You can see here on camera where I'm doing it at real time. And I'm not going to cut them off because I'm going to use those to help me attach all of my florals to my centerpiece. But before we put those on, I'm going to put our bows right to the right and the left of that centerpiece. 
I'm going to attach one of them to the side of the post and then I will attach the second one kind of towards the bottom just like I attached the ribbons and so forth in the mesh. The reason I'm doing this in the side is because I'm going to use that also to help me attach some of our floral pieces later. And here I'm just going in and I'm going to put down the votive to make sure that our candle and our candle holder is going to fit nicely. Now let's prepare our florals. What I'm going to do is push the leaves down toward the bloom. These do have lots of leaves and I'm going to keep all of that. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut my stems and I'm going to keep them quite long. I end up using about six stems from this bush. As I place them into my centerpiece, I'm just going to use, again, those chenille stems and I'm going to wrap them around the stems and I just kind of hide them between the leaves. It really wasn't a problem at all. And if they're too long, I do come in, you'll see, and cut off the ends to make sure they fit correctly. And at the end, I come back with my hot glue and I will glue these to the chenille stems tell y'all all the time I'm not a florist that's why I kind of repeat the same thing on one end that I do on the opposite end so you can see how I place one at the end and then I come back with two on the next section symmetry is the easiest way to do it if you're not a florist and y'all I can't help but to touch those bows every time I move around because I keep squashing them now I'm putting in that baby's breath. I'm just putting it in where I thought the spots looked a little bare or I needed to cover up something. And again, doing the same thing on both ends. When I get to the middle part, I secure it with the chenille stem that was wrapped around that little wooden piece. And that worked like a charm. Of course, followed it up with hot glue. Here I am. I'm going to cut off one of the ones that was too long. And that's pretty much it for the florals in this project. Pretty simple. You could add as much as you want. Now I'm going to place down my votives just to see if my placement's going to work. Oh, I love how this is turning out. I'm going to secure them with a the hot little hot glue. If it comes off later, I really don't mind. I can always reapply. Or maybe I could put a big bunny right in the middle. it's trash for this project we are going to go trash to treasure i went into my trash can and i pulled out this old tin can i cleaned it up and i cut the bottom out of it you want to make sure you have a can that you can open up on both ends a wine cork i got mine from the thrift store but you can get them from any craft store some hippo water slide decal paper you're also going to need a print for your water slide decal paper. I get these from Creative Fabrica, from Etsy, from all kinds of places, but you can also get free prints just by Googling free prints or going to Pinterest and looking for free prints. When we print these, we print it with our inkjet printer, so we need to seal them. I'm going to be using this clear acrylic matte coating. It's by Treehouse, and I got it from Hobby Lobby, but you can use any kind of clear acrylic coating. You, Mod Podge even sells one if you have one of those on hand. Some Waverly chalk paint in plaster. Some leftover florals from another project. I'm going to use these pink roses and ivy from Hobby Lobby and some baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. Some pearl beads. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Some flexible wire. I got this out of my husband's shed, but you could use craft wire if you don't have any other kind of wire. Something to punch with. I'm going to be using my Cropodile Punch from We Are Memory Keepers. I got mine from Joann's when it was on sale and I used a coupon, so I got a really good deal on it. But if you don't have one of these, you could just use an awl. I got my awl from Hobby Lobby. They have them on sale every other week for 50% off, making them about $2.50. And y'all, this thing's amazing. It will punch through almost anything. I use it for my paper projects, but you'll also see me use it on a lot of craft projects. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is work on our can. You want to make sure that your seam is in the back and you're gonna be punching a hole on each side of your can. Now I went ahead and punched mine and you see that this crop of dial, it just goes through it like butter. But I did find out that I should have waited until I crushed it because once I did, the holes didn't line up anymore. Now we are just going to crush that bottom. And this was pretty soft with it not having a bottom in it. I was able to pretty much press it together with my hands. I couldn't get it quite all the way together though. So after I softened that top a little bit and pushed it in some, I end up just kind of grabbing my hammer and I'm going to tap around on the bottom of this and it's going to completely close this up. Just make sure that you don't get your fingers in this when you're doing it. Now I closed it with the hammer, but then I start playing with it and pressing it some and it opened back up. So I had to use it and close it back up. But once I did that, y'all, it looked like that it was actually sealed together. Now we are going to paint our can. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in plaster and I am gonna give it a really good coat all over. Now, when I started painting this, those holes that I made that were not supposed to have been on top really showed up and my way of fixing that was to take a little bit of tape and tape it on the inside so that it kind of closes up the hole. And then I use a little bit of caulk to fill in the top side of this and let it dry. And then once it dried and I painted over it, you really couldn't even tell that they were there. Now I'm gonna finish painting my can. It took one good coat, I let that dry and then I did some touch up and that way it covered everything. Now that my paint is dry, I'm gonna use a little bit of sandpaper. This is just the sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and go over this really lightly. I wanna give it a distressed look and let some of my can pop back out between my paint. Now we're going to take our print that we printed out and you want to cut it down, leaving about an eighth of an inch around it. Now you don't want to get it too close, but I don't leave it too far either. Then you're going to put it in your water and let it soften up. It takes about 45 seconds and you'll feel it start moving across it and you know that it's ready. Now it's real important to wet the surface that you're gonna be applying this to. So make sure you touch that with your wet fingers. Then once this starts sliding, you're gonna position it, hold it with one finger and then slide out the paper with the other one. Just be real careful when you're doing this. Now we're just gonna pat around on the top till we know it's in place. And then we're going to take our paper towel and just pat off all the excess moisture and leave it to completely dry. I love this. Now I'm gonna take one of those wine corks and use my awl and I'm just gonna push it right through the center of this. Now it doesn't go all the way through so I had to go through both sides to open it up. And then I'm gonna take my wire and push it through my wine cork. I'm gonna use it kind of like a handle. I figure out how long I want it to be, making sure that I leave some to twist up. And then I'm going to put some of my beads on there. I decided to just go with two on each side. I used a larger one and a smaller one. And then I used just a little dot of glue to hold them in place so they don't slide back down my wire. Once those are on there, we are gonna take our wire and push it through our hole. And at this point, you can see that you could just bend this up and twist it around itself. That would be totally fine. But I like to make mine a little decorative. I take my pliers and I grab hold of the end of the wire and just kind of twist it around, forming like a little circle, and then twist it to the side and push it into my can. We'll do that one more time and I'll slow it down. You're just gonna take the end of your pliers, grab the end of your wire and start twisting it. As you twist, it's going to form like a little circle and it's gonna keep going around. Once you get it all the way down, you're just gonna kinda turn it towards the can and push it in and you have your cute little handle. Now all we have to do is decorate it. I'm going to use some of this ivy that I got from Hobby Lobby. I clip off a couple pieces and stick those down in there. And then I grab my cute little pink roses that I got from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, I'm kind of obsessed with these. I bought them last year and I ended up buying them again this year just because I love them so much. You clip them off and kind of stick them in there, you know, to your liking. And you can use whatever flowers, you know, match your home decor. I am then going to take a little bit of my baby's breath, clip off a couple of little pieces of it, use some hot glue and stick them down in there. And once I do that, this project is finished.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this cheesecake pan ring that I got from Goodwill Outlet. The bottom was missing, but that's okay because I think we can turn this into something else. Some floral foam from the Dollar Tree, some Rust-Oleum spray paint in hammered dark bronze, some moss from the Dollar Tree, and some florals and greenery from the Dollar Tree and Walmart. So I do think this ring is in really good shape, but I wasn't really feeling that blue color. It is kind of springy, but it doesn't fit my home decor. So we're gonna take it outside, give it several light coats of our spray paint and leave it to dry. Our piece is dry and I think it looks amazing. I love this hammered bronze paint. I just think that it turns these into something really special. Now we'll take our floral foam and we're gonna kinda cut it down till it fits the bottom of this pan. And since it is round, you got that gap in there. So I just took my ruler and cut off some small pieces of my foam and then I use my glue and piece it together. I'm going to be using the Fix All Adhesive Glue from the Dollar Tree. You could use hot glue, but it gets really hot here and I was afraid that it might loosen up. We're gonna stick that down and let it dry. And then we're gonna come in and cover it with some of our moss. Now for this, I am using hot glue. I just put some hot glue on there and cover it with the moss. And it is really messy, but it gives it a finished look. If you see anything in between those flowers, it looks like grass and it looks way more natural than if you were to catch a glimpse of that floral foam. Once we have that covered, all you have to do is go in and start adding your florals. Now, y'all knew I was gonna use a form of pink, but you can use any color you want to, and you can take things from other pieces that you have in your home. You know, if you're tired of them and want to recycle them, you're just gonna stick them in there until you like how they look. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did end up putting way too much in this. It was so crowded, but once I got it hanging on the wall, I was able to edit it, take some of it out, and I loved how it came out. I'm not adding a hanger to mine. I'm just going to sit it on the nail. It holds perfectly. But if you would rather have a hanger, you could punch a hole in the top and use some twine to make a hanger. Or you could even tie some twine to that little piece that locks down at the top. But I like mine just hanging without the twine. Once you get all your florals in, this piece is finished. We hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursday, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!